morning, church. It is uh, good to be with you this morning. A special welcome to our guests worshiping with us today. I'm Dan Shep, one of the pastors here at Gloria Day. Uh, it is an opportunity we have, as the psalmist said, that we rejoice. And they said, let's go to the house of the Lord uh, together. Pastor Randy's sharing the message today, and it's a great opportunity for us to learn about our influence and our impact. And I pray you will take that message and not only hear it, but now live it because of the amazing amount of influence that each and every one of us have in this room and also those online for the kingdom impact we can have in Jesus' name. Hey, we're also having a children's mess this morning, uh, so at that time we'll have Audrey come up for it and and our kids will also join us for a special time, uh, age appropriate, just for them. Let's start with a word of prayer. Here's something, Father, I give you thanks and praise. I thank you for who you are and what you've done for us in Christ Jesus. For your love, your grace, your mercy. This opportunity to receive from you and then to live for you. So we ask that you would be with us now. We ask that you would forgive us all our sins. Because, Lord, we come today to you uh, recognizing also that as we worship you, we also come as unworthy individuals who've fallen short of your holiness. But, Lord, in your grace and mercy, you have set us free. You have claimed us as your children. You died on the cross, and you rose victoriously that we might live victoriously over sin, death, and the evil one. So, Lord, as we confess to you our sins, we recognize our need for your grace and mercy, and we give you thanks for your peace that comes only through you. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends in Christ, as we start off in worship this morning, we start off as his forgiven, his redeemed, his beloved children of God, free from guilt and fear and shame and then we fail again we also have a great God who gives us his grace and mercy that we might live in his peace so I invite you to join with me and as we begin in his name in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. I invite the congregation to please, be, please stand as we sing and join in worship
Pray now together as the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth Hey, I'm about the congregation to be seated, and I'm about our children to come forward for our children's message. Come on up, kids. Awesome. Come on up, y'all. I can't believe I said y'all. Oh, look at all of our friends. This is awesome. Okay, I have a couple helpers this morning. Um, Noah, Abby, and Brookie. And they're going to um, pass out something to each one of you. And here's the deal. When they give you the something, I want you to close your hand and not look at it. So start passing out what I have in the bag. Hold. Oh, sorry, Savannah too. Like, pass them out really, really fast. Put your hand out. Don't look at what you have in your hand yet. Close it up really tight. There we go. You got one. Let's see if I can grab some here. Don't look at it yet. Don't cheat. Raise your hand if you don't have one yet. Awesome. These are my these are my great fifth and sixth grade helpers. Okay, you ready? Open up your hand. What do you have in your hand? It's a little Jesus, isn't it? Do you see that? Isn't that awesome? He's like a little tiny Jesus. So there's this pastor that's on the internet. And his name is Pastor Trent Tribe. And every week he shares a message about Jesus. Well, one week he went into church on a Sunday morning and his whole entire church was covered with hundreds of these little tiny Jesuses. Isn't that crazy? His youth group had a lock-in the night before, and they decided they're going to they're gonna hide these little Jesuses everywhere. So in every nook and every cranny, every place that they looked, they saw Jesus. Well, this video that he took and put out on the internet became so popular that he has thousands and thousands and thousands of followers now. He's what's called an influencer. Have you ever heard the word influence? It's kind of a big fancy word for meaning that people watch him regularly to see what he has to say. And the good news is he has a lot of good stuff to say about Jesus. Well, today we're going to actually talk about you guys being influencers. Pastor Randy's going to talk about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
the Apostle Paul says to the people, here's the deal. You belong to Jesus. Jesus lives in you. And every time you walk out these doors, Jesus goes with you. You influence the world with Jesus. You make a kingdom impact. So every time you're kind, you help, you serve, you love people, anytime you do that, Jesus is doing that out of you. He is using you as an influencer to impact the world. Isn't that cool? Everywhere we go, he lives in us and he walks with us. And every time we love and serve others, it's him doing it through us. You are influencers. That's pretty awesome. But we don't do it on our own. We don't wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to influence. We look and say, Jesus, today work through us to influence others towards Jesus Christ. And we need his help. So would you fold your hands and bow your heads? Moms and dads and big people, would you fold your hands and bow your heads? And I want you all to pray with me. Would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus we love you so much. We love you so much. And, we know, Lord, and we know, Lord, that you love us too. That you love us too. So, much so much that you live inside us and you use us to point back to you. You have made us, Lord, influencers for you. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I want you to take these back with you and set them somewhere in your bedroom or your house to remind you every day to be an influencer for Jesus. the opportunity to hear from the kids as well and a great reminder that our I start off the service that every one of us is an influencer maybe not social media influencer but an even better one an influencer for Jesus Christ one of those opportunities that we have to influence we actually have to know what we're influencing and who we're talking about the Apostles Creed is a, a confession that was Made in the early church was a baptismal creed. It talks about who God the Father is who created us, his son, Jesus, who redeemed us and gives us his grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And, and the Holy Spirit is the one who creates faith in us and, and gives us that, that faith to be able to be that influencer for Jesus. And so I invite you to make this confession with me. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again for the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues as we worship our Savior with our offerings. As our ushers prepare themselves to receive the offering, a couple of things I want to think, have you think about as Pastor Randy is sharing the message with you this morning about the, the impact that we have through our influence. And while you may not ever realize the impact you're having on people, please know that your influence is strong. How do I know? We actually have a, a mission team right now in Honduras. They had a medical brigade yesterday. I haven't heard about it all, but I'm, no news for me is good news right now. Can't wait to hear all the stats and all the things that happened and all the lives that were impacted because 
because of your financial generosity, because of your courageous giving, we have a team in Honduras that there's somebody yesterday received a pair of glasses that changed their life forever. And you probably had no idea that we were doing all that. There's someone who received medical care yesterday, someone who received uh, a clear vision yesterday. Our high school mission trip, your generosity got them there as well. And, and I, I will tell you, I saw a noticeable difference before they left and after they returned. I know there's folks that were praying about that. In fact, one grandmother came up to me in tears after the 8.30 service. Her prayers were answered because of the life change that took place on that mission trip. You have amazing amounts of influence and impact for the kingdom. And it happens not only as we live our lives, but also through our sacrificial giving that gives us the opportunity to reach further out into this community. So I thank you for your generosity. And I invite the ushers forward to receive the offering.
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we come before you, we thank you that you have purchased our salvation and have done everything to save us and to give us your mercy and grace and forgiveness. Lord, as we come before you and hear your word, we pray that it would find root in our hearts that we would live this out, Lord, and that you would continue as you promised to be with us, that we would make a lasting impact for your name's sake. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your truth, and we pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Glory day. Uh, good morning. My name is Randy Miller, one of the pastors here. It's wonderful to be with you all here in worship and to hear God's word and to see what he says as we wrap up this series about making a kingdom impact and to see and to celebrate how the Holy Spirit is working in and through us to begin an impact beyond ourselves than we could ever imagine. And to begin our conversation, I want to remind you of, of a weather event that happened here in Houston last month uh, in May. It was about mid-May uh, when this storm was rolling through. And when I heard about this storm, I did what every normal person would do. And instead of sheltering in place and going to the bathroom and hunkering down, I wanted to go outside and see what the storm that everybody was talking about that was coming our way. And there was this impressive picture uh, of this storm cloud rolling through Houston and um, this picture doesn't do it justice, but you can see just the winds and the rain that were behind this storm. And it was about mid-May when weather forecasters called this a, a I gotta get the name right, a derecho. Never heard of a derecho before. And they were describing this storm that rolled through Houston, had 100 mile an hour part winds, and caused a lot of damage. And you might have seen some of the pictures in downtown Houston of, of high rises and the windows just being blown out. And it was very, very destructive. But the impact wasn't just here in Houston. Uh, there was a map that was shown of the impact that this storm had, not just in Houston, but it, it carried this impact all the way from Houston and went and went continued eastward all the way to Florida. And, and there was this map that showed the impact of the storm from Space City to the Space Coast. It affected JSC all the way to Cape Canaveral. It, it was really a unique kind of storm um, that connected our brothers and sisters in Florida to us here in Texas. And even though it was really destructive, it was also really impressive how the storm just made this lasting impact um, not just in Texas, but all across Florida. And so when I look at the scriptures for today, I want to connect that to, to our church's impact, and not in a destructive way, but in an impact where one action and, and one event can have this ripple effect across our lives and across our community that can't be controlled and that we cannot even imagine what Jesus would do in and through us. So the questions for us today are, is it possible for, for the breeze of God, is it possible for the wind of God's Spirit to move in and through your life to see that you have an impact beyond what you could ever imagine? That His grace and mercy and forgiveness, that that would just ripple through all the lives that you transform in ways that you have never expected? What if the winds of the Spirit blew in your life so powerfully that God's Spirit would just dump out on you and you knew that you, in courage, could take a bold step of faith and that you knew that God was calling you to take this action or to say this word that would make an impact across generations? What if the breeze of God's Spirit rushes in and through this congregation in more ways than we could ever count, that we would have this impact that the community would look at Glory Day to say, wow, there's something going on at that church, and it's so amazing to see what is happening in our community. And so what we're going to walk through is to celebrate not only the impact we're making at Glory Day, but also some of the barriers, some of the things that get in the way of us making a kingdom impact. Because God's word has a lot to say. Because God, when he built this church, he wants us to make this lasting impact, but he also knows that we're broken and that we're sinners, and that there's things that can get in the way of that impact, and we want to take a look at those barriers and see how God's Spirit breaks them down. So the first one I want us to look at is in Luke chapter 8, and I would invite you to turn into the scriptures with me in the Pew uh, Bible ahead of you in page 865. 
looking at Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. And we have this scene of a storm where Jesus shows us one major barrier to us as a congregation making this kingdom impact for Jesus. So Luke chapter 8, the verses will also be on the screen. Verses 22 to, through 25. The author writes, and this is an event that happens in the disciples as they're following Jesus. One day he, Jesus, got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. I imagine this windstorm, similar to what we experience in Houston, just something uncontrollable and something that was just massive. And they were filling with water and were in danger. And so they went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke, and he rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased, and there was a calm. So I would imagine the disciples in that moment, in the middle of that storm, they know Jesus is sleeping, and I bet in the middle of all that they said, Jesus doesn't even care about us. He's sleeping through the storm. He doesn't even realize what's going on. And Jesus is going to call them out. And look what he says in verse 25. After he calms the storm, he said to them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Jesus is calling them out and saying, your fear got in the way of your impact. And the same is true in our lives. Our fear can get in the way of making this impact for Jesus' sake and in his name. Some of us want the path all rolled out. We want step by step. We want to know exactly what God's calling us to do. And it's only when we know the plan and we have it all laid out, that's the first step that we'll take. But Jesus, he calls us on a life of an adventure, a life of faith and trust. And he's not going to show us the whole path. He just asks us to be obedient, to take that step one step at a time and to watch as that path unfolds. And that's what he's saying to the disciples, where is your faith? And he's saying, even in the midst of the storms, even in the midst of confusion and anxiety, we can still look to Jesus to make a lasting impact. And so what is that in our lives where we're fearful? What is that in our lives where we know God is calling us to take this step, but we just don't wanna take it, whether we are just lazy and we have so many other priorities, or whether we're fearful about what the impact might look like. Jesus is calling that out and he's saying, where is your faith? Trust in me because I'm giving you the strength. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit so that you can be bold and courageous to step out in faith to make an impact. There's another big barrier, another big obstacle to a congregation, all of us making an impact. Not just fear, but we're gonna fast forward to 1 Corinthians chapter one. And in 50 AD, there was this letter that the, Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. And he was very concerned about their impact because they weren't making an impact at all. They were very much divided. There were rivalries within the church. There, were in, there was infighting. And Paul spent about a year and a half creating this movement with the help of the Holy Spirit, talking about Jesus and him crucified and resurrected. And after a year and a half, he left and went to Ephesus. And he passed the baton of leadership to other people to continue his work. And he hears word that it's not going well. So he writes this letter to Corinth called 1 Corinthians. And right out of the gate in the first chapter, he calls it out and says, this is the issue you're facing and you need to deal with this. And we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you skip ahead to page 952, we're going to see the second barrier. And it's a major barrier to a congregation making impact. And this is what Paul had to say to them. In chapter 1, verse 11 of 1 Corinthians, he says, For it has been reported to be my Chloe's people. So he calls out Chloe and says, You can't argue with me. This is a trusted, reliable source. Chloe's people is telling me this about you in Corinth, that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. And what I mean is this, that each of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. There were these rivalries in the church where people lined up behind the leaders, each of the leaders, and said, well, I follow Apollos, and I'm going to only listen to him. And I follow Cephas, and I'm only going to follow him and what he says. And they were just picking these people and these leaders in church, 
And all the congregation had their factions, and, and they had their groups that they were in. And Paul's calling that out, saying, if there's divisions, that's going to be a huge barrier for you to make an impact. And Paul's going to be talking about this, and, and there's this undercurrent of who matters and who doesn't. There's this undercurrent of who's in and a part of the in crowd and who's outside of that crowd. And so for us to get an idea of what that would look like today, it would be like any of you saying, well, I follow Pastor Dan, and I'm only going to listen to what he says, or I follow Pastor Randy or Pastor Steve, or the 8.30 service is so much better than the 11 o'clock service, or the 11 o'clock service, because it's later in the day, is so much better and has much better music than the 8.30 service, or that the 1.30 service is making a bigger impact than the 11 or the 8.30 service. Or that Derek, he's, he's the best mu- worship leader, so we're going to follow what he says. Or Omar, he's awesome at 11 o'clock, and I'm going to follow what he says and like what he likes. So it'd be any of us lining up behind any of those personalities and saying, that's why I'm here at Glory Days, because of that one person. And Paul is calling that out, saying, Glory Day isn't about any one personality. It's not about one person. Paul's going to show us in 1 Corinthians that it's not about personalities and, and anyone in church. It's about what Jesus is doing in and through this community. So Paul's going to get after this in three different images, three different word pictures that we can see. And this is really important. If you're just worshiping with us at Gloria Day and you're new, you're going to have the tendency to be at Gloria Day because of a personality. You're going to pick someone, a church leader, and say, you know, because of them, it's why I'm here at Gloria Day. And this is going to show you that it's not about a person at Gloria Day. It's about all of our individual efforts and how God is pulling that together for us to make a bigger impact so that you can grow in faith. And if you've been here 20, 30, 40 years at Gloria Day, this is a great reminder that you're here not because of any one pastor, You're not here because of any one influence in your life. It's because of what God has done in and through all of the church leaders in your life so that you're here today continuing to grow in faith. So the first image that Paul is going to show us uh, is forward in a couple of chapters in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And he says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 4. He says, for one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, Are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What then is Paul? And he's going to answer this question. He says, They're servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. And here he's going to give us our first metaphor, our first word picture for us to be reminded of. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So Paul's saying here, in your work, in your commitment to church, This is God's field. He says, imagine it as God's field, that the church leaders are planting seeds, that you're planting seeds, uh, that people are watering it, but it's only God who causes the growth. And he moves on in verse 7 and says, neither he who plants or he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. So he's saying our job, our role is to work God's field. It's to till the soil. It's to work humbly and collaboratively. He's saying Apollos and Cephas, they're, they're fellow team members. They're not competition. They're fellow workers with us in God's field. And that we can't make anything grow. We can't make anything happen. We can't control outcomes. And many of us, as I look around, we're not farmers. We don't work in fields. So to translate this to today, it'd be like us, like nurturing our lawn or helping the plants that we have. We we might plant seeds, we might fertilize, we might tend and take care of the lawn, but can we make the sun come up? Can we make it rain? We can't control any of that. It's God who causes the growth. And the same thing is true in our spiritual lives. We can't force anything or make anything happen. It's all God. Holy Spirit and what, he did and what he does through our influence and through our impact. We're called to be faithful and we're called to look at this as God's field. So what would it look like if you looked at your role at Gloria Day and you said to yourself, this is God's field. God is the one causing the growth. 
so that if you, you as an usher, let's say, as, as you're passing the offering plates or greeting people at the door, what if you had this perspective, and, and many of you do, that, man, this is, this is God's field. Let's see what God does in and through the people here that worship today. Or maybe if you're a greeter and you're greeting at the doors, what if you saw your role as this is God's field, as, as people walk onto campus, that God is doing amazing things to grow people's faith, and you get to be a part of that as you get to smile and greet people and welcome them by name? What if any of you who volunteer in children's ministry, what if you saw those little itty bitties and you said, this is God's field, this is God's field, and he's causing the growth in these children, and because you're a leader in that group, you get to be a part of the influence and impact that they're going to make as they grow up. Or maybe if those of you, small group leaders in middle school and high school, you saw your group, the, the youth that you mentor and disciple, what if you saw that as God's field, that God is tending the hearts of those youth and that you get to be a part of their impact when they go off to college and as they grow to be an adult to see what they get to do. You get to celebrate the work of the Spirit because of your influence and your commitment Sunday in and Sunday out to pour into them or to go on a mission trip with them. God's work is totally amazing when we see it that this is God's field. Paul's going to build into a second metaphor that maybe we can connect a little bit more stronger. In verse 9, this is what he says, that we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, God's building. So he says, not only is this God's field, but we're also subcontractors in God's kingdom. Right? He's saying in verse 10, according to the grace God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. Let each one take care how he builds on it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul's saying, a year and a half ago, I laid the foundation, and that foundation was already Jesus Christ. I built on it, I left, and other people are building on it. And he's reminding us here at Gloria Day that we just didn't appear out of the blue last week, that there was this foundation laid, and it wasn't any one pastor, it wasn't any one church leader that laid the foundation other than Jesus Christ. And all the church leaders since have just been faithful to that foundation to build upon that. And that's what we get to call to. We are all subcontractors in God's building. And he uses you and he uses me to make a profound impact to continue to build glory a day. Not, not just physically as far as a building, but more importantly, spiritually, that we're building a spiritual family and giving people the courage, helping them clarify their calling so they can live a life of faith into what God is calling them to do. And he's saying our foundation is Jesus Christ. Jesus isn't this idea. He isn't just a set of values. He isn't just this, you know, thing that we kind of think about. But this is a real person that Jesus shows us what it's like to build God's building in humility that he shows us he goes to the cross and dies a death that we deserve. And then three days later rises again and gives us all the strength that we need and gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to build his church and glorify him. Paul builds on this in verse 12. He says, now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay or straw, each one's work will be made manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. So he gives us this metaphor. If, if we're building with gold or silver or precious stones, that's going to last. When that, that fire hits those elements, those are going to last. But wood or hay or straw, he says, that's going to burn up so quickly. And he's saying if there's divisions, if people are posturing themselves and saying, I'm going to follow this leader, that's all wood and hay and straw. It's all going to crumble. It's the wrong foundation. And Paul is going to continue to encourage us and say, this is really great work we get to be a part of and that God is working in us to build a strong church. He moves on to the third image, and this is God's temple. In verse 16, Paul says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells within you? He's shifting our focus not just to a building but to our own souls and our own lives and how he has designed us and how he has woven us together into a spiritual community. He says, you are God's temple 
and that his spirit resides in you, that you have everything you need to follow God's call in your life. Jesus reinforced this in his ministry in Matthew chapter 18 where he says, for where two or three are gathered, what does he promise? He says, where two or three are gathered, I am with them. I am in their midst. And so it's wonderful to imagine as we glory a day, we make this impact not just when we gather on Sunday mornings, but whenever we are sent out to our neighborhoods, whenever we're sent out into our community. This week is impact week, and so there's going to be many people that go out into our local community, and they're going to make an impact, and there's going to be this ripple effect that they have no clue their influence would be on someone else. Or as Pastor Dan mentioned, all the way across the world in Honduras, that we're making an impact there through that team in a way that we don't even realize. That's because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's something for us to realize and remind ourselves so that we can celebrate that work and not have any division among us. It's an age-old tale that, that raises our vision of an architect who is visiting a project site. And he was watching these three bricklayers lay these bricks. And he asked each one of them, why are you doing this? What's your motivation for laying these bricks? And he went to the first bricklayer, and the first one said, well, I'm doing this to collect a paycheck so that I can put food on the table and help my family. And there really wasn't much energy left in him. He was pretty tired by the end of the day. The second bricklayer said, well, I'm, I'm building a really strong wall, and this is going to be the strongest wall on this side of the building, and it's going to protect everyone inside. And the third bricklayer answered the question from that architect, well, I'm building this great cathedral that will gather people together so they can worship God, and it's going to be a beautiful building. We can, the point is, we can do all this work for Jesus, but here in Scripture, it forces us to look at our motivation. To say, are we just checking the box and saying, because we signed up to volunteer, we're going to follow through and, and that's it at the end of the day and that's all I'm going to do? Or does it motivate us to ask, how can we help? How can we step up and fill that need? What is God calling me to do that's bigger than anything I've ever thought before? That this isn't just a task, that this is work that the Holy Spirit's doing to give me a bolder faith, to help others make an impact in their life. Because Paul, at the end, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 21 and 23, he reminds all of us, he says, Let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death or the present or the future. He's like, are you hearing me? You have everything you need when you're in Jesus Christ. He says, all are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. It's a reminder for our lives of faith that we are connected in Christ to make this impact in our community. And it's not about personalities or your favorite person at Glory Day. It's all about Jesus. And as long as our focus is on Jesus, God will continue to have his spirit make your bigger impact in our lives and our community than we ever thought possible. So Glory Day, it is a bright and exciting future in the life of our church. And I want you to imagine what Jesus has already done here at Gloria Day and what he will do in the future that will make a lasting impact in our community in Jesus' name. So as we continue to move forward, we move forward with boldness and without any fear. We move forward united, knowing that Jesus is making this impact in our lives and those ripple effects to the next generation, to the people around us, will be in ways that we would never think possible. Be encouraged by these words, and may you continue to follow God's call in your life, that you would be renewed and strengthened in what he has for you and your community. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you so much for your word that helps us to be stronger and not be afraid. We thank you, Lord, that you show us in a very real way your son, Jesus Christ, and the work that he's done for us in the cross and the empty tomb and the work that he's doing every single day to strengthen our faith and to, for us to step out in obedience to you. Lord, we lift up everything that we're doing here at Glory Day, that we would live lives of impact and that we would continue to strengthen our bonds, that we would be, continue to be united to move forward with boldness and courage. Lord, we lift up those who are sick or who are ill, those who are facing procedures and surgeries later this week. 
We pray that you would be with the doctors and the nurses, that they would be instruments of your healing, and that you would work a miracle in their lives to restore them to full health. Lord, we also lift up all of our Concordias, our universities and colleges that are a part of our Lutheran Synod. Lord, we pray for the leaders across our entire nation of those Concordias, that they would make wise decisions and that you would continue to, that you would continue to instill in them the mission and purpose of our universities to bring those who are far away from Jesus closer to you in education and in their spiritual lives. Lord, we also pray for all of our mission trips, for Impact Week this week, for Honduras as that team travels back. We thank you for the Colorado mission trip and the work you're doing this summer in the lives of our youth and the lives of our adults to be able to see you at work across the world. Lord, we lift up these prayers and all other prayers before you that you would hear and answer and continue to give us your Holy Spirit so that we may trust in you more fully. We thank you, Lord, and we pray this all in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Randy. As um, hearing that word of God, it's an opportunity for us now to make that influence and impact in our lives, in our communities. And it starts first in the home. Before we leave today, though, a couple of announcements I want to share with you. Um, impact Week starts tomorrow. Uh, great opportunity. Uh, if you still want to volunteer, please, today is the last day to sign up to do so. Uh, there are also, uh, many of our ministry partners in our community will be receiving services through Impact Week, uh, and it's a great opportunity we have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. In fact, there's also a free car wash on June 27th. This is not a, you know, it's a, it's really a free thing. There's not going to be like, hey, come on, give us a free will donation. No, it's going to be an opportunity just to come in and be served by our students and families of Gloria Day. A couple things also, next Sunday, Freedom Sunday, you don't want to miss this service. This is an amazing opportunity we have to celebrate our nation's uh, independence, uh, also celebrating our men and women of our armed forces, both active and retired. Uh, if you are, um, if you still have a uniform and it still fits, wear it. It'd be great. I love, I love uh, hearing all the different stories this morning also. We have a guest speaker, David Malsby. He's the Executive Director of Support and Giving of PTS Founda PTSD Foundation of America and also serves at Camp Hope. And so we're going to have Camp Hope representatives here also with us next Sunday. A great opportunity to hear about that ministry. Uh, last announcement to share with you is uh, next Sunday also, Fifth Sunday Food Drive. As you leave today, there's a list of items that you, you are, are high priority needs. One of the things that happens in the summer is a lot of the kids and, who receive free and reduced lunches uh, during the year are not longer having the opportunity to have that uh, in the summer months. So here's a great way to help support Lighthouse Christian Ministries. Before we go to the, uh, the benediction, I want to say thank you to Stephanie Neal this morning. Uh, welcome back, Stephanie. It's good to have you here with us today. Um, and Gabriel also. Um, Stephanie and Gabriel are, are here this morning. Omar is uh, in Honduras on the mission team. And so we celebrate with uh, uh, Omar and his leadership there. Uh, and kind of a neat thing also, he is going to stay after a couple days later and visit uh, the capital city of Tegucigalpa and actually will be on a couple radio shows and uh, sharing some incredible stuff. So I give thanks. I, I did tell him he has to come back. Um, that, that's not allowed. And so... Uh, Stephanie's good to have you. Stephanie moved to Fulcher. That's why she's not with us on a regular basis now. And so, um, but with that, I invite the congregation to please stand. You know, we've been doing this whole sermon series on making kingdom impact. We've been talking about the Great Commission, about making disciples of all nations, that we're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. We also heard today that we don't go alone. We go with God's spirit who dwells within us. And every one of you in this room is an influencer, especially in your homes. And what kind of kingdom impact are you making in your homes? I, I see grandparents here right now with their grandkids. It's huge, huge. How are you making an impact in your neighborhood with the influence of Jesus as Christ lives within you? And so as you go today out into that mission field, realize you go in his name and with his spirit. Go with his blessing. Lord, bless you and keep you.
Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon his favor and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Let's close it out. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace.